Senior Research Fellow at Pembroke College at the University of Oxford. Elizabeth, let me ask you first. There's a lot we still don't know about these attacks. One happened at a busy international airport. Both were close to residential areas. But in the 24 hours immediately after the attacks, there have been very little videos on social media. There's been very little comment about it. What do you make of all of this? I, I think that what's happening is that everyone's assessing the extent and the impact of the attack before they rush to conclusions. And this is very smart, uh, especially on the part of the UAE. They don't want a knee-jerk reaction. But I think it's safe to say already that this is a very significant development in the war. Although it's not completely unprecedented, you know, there have been Houthi-claimed attacks on the UAE before, it's much more usual to see this type of coordinated drone and ballistic missile attack against Saudi Arabia, the immediate neighbor of the Houthis to the north. And in fact, there've been about a thousand such attacks on Saudi Arabia since the war begun. But no attack like this involving the loss of life in the United Arab Emirates. So this is a major breach mm. of UAE security. Lives have been lost. It's deep into UAE territory. It's a real escalation and it opens up yet another regional dimension to the conflict. Is this the right time for the Houthis to be carrying out attacks like this when there appears to be some effort on, um, on the parts of Saudi Arabia and Iran to reach some sort of agreement um, between them? I think it's important to understand at the moment that we're not clear on precisely how closely the Houthis and Iran collaborated on these particular attacks. And that's, that's important because it, it helps inform the message that they're trying to send us. Uh, and I think it's also important to point out that the Houthis are supported by Iran, but they're not a direct proxy. The Houthis can still make independent decisions. So what kind of message is being sent at this time? I think we can read it in various ways. And these pivot really around two parallel strands of Iran talks. As you say, there's a regional independent dialogue happening between Iran and Saudi Arabia and also Iran and the United Arab Emirates. And the Houthi message perhaps in that case is, look, we're still here, we're a persistent threat and it doesn't matter if you make sideline agreements with Iran. We're an independent entity and we're still going to be bellicose. The other strand, the second strand, is of course the international JCPOA, the nuclear deal talks. And these are reaching quite a fraught position at the moment. There's an urgency to get them over the line. So this could be Iran sending a message to the international community saying, look what we can do. We can destabilize the region. You need to give us more. Elizabeth, um, given the fact that the Emirates has removed a lot of its own troops from the ground in Yemen, do you think that that is going to encourage it to mount even greater attacks in Yemen from now because it has fewer of its own citizens uh, to be to put at risk? Yes, that's possible. As my colleagues have pointed out, one of the triggers of this attack now may be that the UAE-backed forces have played a crucial role in pushing back Houthi advances in Shabwa, in Ma'rib. And so the message from the Houthis in that case might be pull back UAE, pull your backed forces away, or there could be worse to come. Now, this might well backfire. But I think it's likely to backfire. What it's likely to do is to steal the resolve of the United Arab Emirates against the Houthis and to also perhaps help mend some of the rifts that had started to appear inside the Saudi-led coalition and pull them back together again. We've seen talks between the Houthis and Saudi Arabia and various other sides which have reached a stalemate. We've seen this military action now. And I am, I do, please do forgive, forgive me because we don't have a lot of time. How do you see this playing out over the next few weeks? Well, I think there are three main implications of this. First of all, it changes the calculus of both the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia towards the war. It shows them what could happen in their own countries. Second, it makes an agreement with Iran even more urgent because even if the Houthis are acting independently, well, they need their weapons replenished from somewhere. Someone's supplying them. Someone has trained them. And it's very likely that that is Iran. And then third, 
Yemen shoots up the international agenda. It may have fallen off with other problems like Afghanistan or Ethiopia, but now with the region potentially ablaze with the overspill that everyone was concerned about from the Yemen war actually up there as a possibility, I think everyone's eyes will turn back mm. to Yemen. Elizabeth, thank you very much indeed. I want to say thanks to all our guests.